In this next video, I want to tell you about what I consider to be one of the most fun experiences I've ever had in my life, and that's exploring Finnish and Swedish Lapland, but especially going dog sledding. So stick around. Hey there, Ralph Velasco of the Continental Drifter, where I share simple but powerful tips designed to make your travels easier and your photography even better. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Know that everything I talk about will be linked in the description below. All right, let's do this. Remember, drifters, life's too short not to travel. A few years ago, I had the incredible opportunity to scout and bring a group to Finnish and Swedish Lapland. Greater Lapland actually spans parts of Norway, Finland, Sweden, and Russia, but I concentrated on the portion that spanned the Swedish and Finnish border, near the town of Kukula, although we even made our way up to Overtornio and the Arctic Circle. I really had no idea what to expect, and to be honest, Lapland wasn't high on my list of places to see, but my local tour operator in Italy, who helped me put together a fantastic trip to Tuscany, also specialized in Lapland, and he couldn't stop raving about it when we were together. Alessandro, who is 100% Italian, spent considerable time in Finland working. He speaks fluent Finnish, and he's even married to a wonderful Finnish woman named Nina. If you can believe it, Alessandro even decided to move his entire family, he and Nina have three children, from the amazing Tuscany to Lapland. That's how much he loves it. After making a huge success of our Tuscany trip, I decided to do a scouting trip to Sweden and Finland, including flying into Stockholm, the capital of Sweden, and out of Helsinki, the capital of Finland. We spent some quality time in Stockholm, an incredibly beautiful city located on the Baltic Sea. And then we flew up to Lulia, where a van drove us to the small town of Kukula on the Swedish side of the Torne River, which acts as the border between Sweden and Finland at this point. We spent our days snowmobiling, ice fishing, and watching our amazing local guide, Risto, cook sausages and any fish we caught on a portable barbecue he brought with us. This was out on the frozen waters that abound in this area. Of course, we had to drill our own holes in the ice to catch the fish, and that definitely took some effort, but that was all part of the experience. It's great because all the foul weather gear and big snow boots are provided, so we didn't have to think about packing these items. If you know me at all, then you know I love to incorporate the local food into my trips. But I'll be honest, I had zero expectations of the food in this part of the world. Needless to say, I was absolutely knocked out by the quality and variety of what we were served. Reindeer are abundant in Lapland, and they're an important food staple, so I had to try it. It was fantastic and wonderfully prepared at one of the places where we stayed called Hulkoff Garden, a beautiful boutique property owned and operated by the wonderful Pia Hulkoff and her husband, Kurt. We also had a chance to explore some very small nearby villages, learn traditional methods of cooking on centuries old wood burning stoves, and also to go dog sledding, which I'll get back to in just a moment. In the evening, we'd go out in search of the Aurora Borealis, or Northern Lights, which are a regular occurrence this far north. And although at times elusive due to the uncooperative weather conditions, such as clouds and whiteouts, we were able to get some pretty amazing shots of this incredible phenomenon, which are said to be a result of the solar wind. Have you ever seen the Northern Lights? Let me know in the comments below. Now, back to the reason for this video. One of the most fun activities I've ever done is to drive a dog sled in Finnish Lapland. We drove a short distance to a place that organizes such experiences, and though at first the dogs go mad barking and yelping while they're being strapped in and the sleds are being prepared, as soon as they start moving, it's dead silent and one of the most peaceful places you can imagine. The dogs are excited and just want to work and get going, that's all. Here's some footage from the two times I had a chance to do this. One on my scouting trip and one with my group. I like to say, I'll try anything twice. I don't trust first impressions. This is what it's like to be pulled by nine 
Siberian Huskies in the Finnish Lapland. It's gorgeous. Here we are at a quick stop. You can hear the dogs barking up a storm. They just want to move. So they go crazy whenever we stop. But as soon as we get going, they quiet down and they're in their element. Believe it or not, I'm driving this sled. Obviously not very well as I have to duck that. <laughs> Gotta keep an eye in front. Because you're expending some energy gently moving with the sled and keeping the dogs on track, don't worry, they know the way. It really wasn't that cold while we were out, especially because the air was still and there was no wind. Afterward, a roaring fire is waiting for us in a small shack and coffee, hot cocoa, tea, and snacks are provided for a job well done. In the time since I was there a few years ago, Ali and his partners have set up shop in a former parish summer camp and renamed it Old Pine Husky Lodge. I'll put a link to it in the description below. They not only provide similar dog sledding experiences, but also have accommodations, food service, and a traditional sauna. So fun. Question of the day. Have you ever been to Lapland? Have you ever tried dog sledding? Go ahead and put your answers in the comments below. Well, I do hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you did, give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't already, be sure to look around the channel, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you don't miss an episode. Next, head on over to the ContinentalDrifter.co website for more interesting travel and photography tips and to get my latest download. Finally, join our community over on the Continental Drifter Facebook page. And remember, drifters, life's too short not to travel.